Let's do it. What's up, JD Aliens? Come on in here, man. Just come on in a little closer, man. So today is a special day because I decided to welcome you to The Pit. Yep, this is my in-home garage gym, like workout pit. And uh, the reason I wanted to do this video is because now everybody's kind of working out at home and you cannot find fitness equipment like anywhere. Like you go to Academy, Walmart, all of the fitness equipment is gone. So a lot of people are ordering stuff online and it turns out online a lot of stuff is gone or delayed shipping or something like that. So I figured I'd do this video just to, you know, if you got some stuff at home already, maybe you can actually, you know, use some of these tips or maybe this will be something you order after this whole shortage of thing goes away. And uh, cause I got some cool stuff here, man. I wanna show you some of the cool new stuff I purchased for my home gym. So first off, I wanted to talk about these uh, sandbags right here. So if you get down here, get down here, man. See that sandbag? Okay, so I forgot who makes it, but I'll put a link in the description. This is the sandbag. This thing is built. I love the quality of the build of this bag. Let's get in here. So you open it up. It's got this nice protective flap to protect the zipper. And it's got one, two, three sandbags you put in the big bag. So this one right here, or let's start with this one. This is a 10 pound bag. This is a 20 and that's a 30. So the reason why I like this bag because is because of the quality of it and the like how well thought out it is. All right, so if we open this up, we open this flap, all the sand, well I use actually pea gravel. All the pea gravel should not come out because, I don't know if you can see that, but because the Velcro actually comes all the way up to the lip right here. So it's actually sealed right there. And then you put the leftover Velcro flap over. That way, all your stuff doesn't come leaking out. It's stitched up very, very well. Then you slide it up in this big bag right here. And we're gonna use the 10 pounds. So this is uh, 40 pounds we got right here. And I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of exercises with this thing in a second. And I want it to be light so I don't embarrass myself. But the handles are constructed really well. You actually have kind of a, I don't know if that's aluminum or a metal, or it's, it's some kind of metal in there that has that curvature. And then this rubber handle goes on top of that to kind of give it a little bit more stability. And that type of handle is on the top. And you got your verticals, your vertical style handles. You got your side handles. And on the opposite side, you got horizontal handles. So this thing could be used in a multitude of ways. Man, it's so hot in here. I'm like sweating like crazy. Okay, you got the clean and squat. You squat down, you clean, and then you bring it up to your chest, squat down with a front squat, bring it back down, clean, squat. Do about 12 of those, and you're gonna die. Especially if you got sweat in your eyes, oh my God. All right, next you got your standard bench press. This one is actually a kind of a cage slash squat rack. Love this one because it allows me to do a lot of different things like, you know, my deadlifts, my squats, and of course bench press. Now I wanna take you over to the kettlebell and dumbbell rack. This is where all my weight plates go. I keep my 45s over there on the bench press, on the rack over there, but this is where all the 35s and under go on the sides. Then you got your full scale of uh, dumbbells all the way up to 45. I haven't gotten anything bigger than a 45 because one, if I need more weight, I'll just do more reps because those gigantic, you know, 65 and 70 pound dumbbells, they just take up too much space, man. <laughs> and then you got your full range of uh, kettlebells here, ranging from, so it's a 10, yeah, from 10 pounds all the way up to 35 pounds. And then when I want to go a little bit higher, let me introduce you to my friend Bubba. Everybody should know a guy named Bubba with a gold tooth. Excuse my sweat dripping on his nose, but that's Bubba right there. So what you do with Bubba is, you, let, me, let me take Bubba out real quick. Whoo, man, Bubba will wear you out. I don't know what'll wear you out more. Is it the sandbag or is it Bubba? But either way, it's a dang good workout. So right, what I like to do with Bubba is, I just grab him backwards like this. I squat down, one hand on one knee, you thrust up, you rotate it, and you push up. That's one of the kettlebell exercises. Or you know, you got your, all your kettlebell exercises. You got your swings and stuff like that. Let me just get a couple of these in. Ugh. So you just thrust up, drop it down, tap it, thrust up. Oh man, there's some good functional training right here. Oh my God. So Bubba is not, uh, it's not standard weight. That's 1.5 poods. Get in there and look at that. 1.5 poods, all right? That's the equivalent of, ugh. 
54 pounds. All right, so you got a 54, a 54 pound bubble right there. <sighs> now, every good home gym needs a way to curl some stuff. Yeah, you got your dumbbells, but you got your stands right here. So if you got a bench that you can move out separately, you can do things like skull crushers, where you can lay down and have this catching you. And of course, if you got an easy curl bar, you can just put it there and do your curls. So that's always nice to have. And plus these are adjustable. You can't get high enough to do a squat, but definitely low enough to do curls or even a, a deadlift to where you can just grab it off the rack and then start deadlifting without having to go all the way to the bottom. So that's why I like having that right there. I am so out of breath. Whew. Got your chalkboard and your TV, because sometimes I like to watch like beach body videos or CT Fletcher videos. Let me get up in here. Yeah, <laughs> it's still your set. And you got your whiteboard so you can write down the workout that you're doing of the day if you want to get creative. Got some yoga blocks here. Let me see what else. All kinds of like gloves and stuff. That's where we keep all this trash up here. Gots to have that chalk, man. If you're not chalking up your hands, then you're doing it wrong because as you can see, I don't wear gloves when I work out. I just chalk my hands. <laughs> so you gotta get your hands nice and chalky. So I made this pull-up bar. Well, I didn't really make it. I bought the brackets and hopefully I can find the link online for you guys and you just nailed it or screw those bad boys into some, uh, into some studs. If you're like me, you're not gonna find a stud on the first try. You're gonna have like 18 holes on each side. <laughs> <laughs> but once you find the stud, you'll be good to go. All right, so I took off my pulley so I can demonstrate a pull-up for you guys. Uh, it's not gonna flex. I have been up to 255 pounds. Right now I'm at 240, and this thing can definitely support my weight. You got a wide grip here and a neutral grip right here. I actually like doing forward grip pull-ups because, I don't know, it's just the way I'm built. So you get your forward hand grip going, and you just pull. You see it's not flexing, creaking, or bending, or anything like that. Notice I'm not doing those weird CrossFit pull-ups <laughs> i'm doing real pull-ups okay at 240 pounds what now since we're here let's talk about since this is a hanging structure you can actually do your uh like some ab work you put your elbows in here i have a jump box over there or a plyo box you step up on it get your elbows in there that way you can work on those abs and leg leg lifts and stuff but then you also have this pulley attachment that i purchased off amazon let's get in here and take a look at this thing as simple as it may be, it is just a pulley. It is hard to find these components separately, so I just bought the kit. Now let me demonstrate how this works. It actually came with this right here, which is what you slide an Olympic weight plate onto. So you clip it up here. I drilled a hole into my pull-up bar. All right, so we're gonna take, a, let's take a 35 pound plate and put it on there just for demo purposes. I'll take this 35. I like to put all my weights down face first. Clip that in there just like such. That is your weight that you're working off of, okay? Then you can buy any attachment you want. I have a lat pull down attachment, just like the ones you see at the gyms. A lat pull down attachment. You got your, your V pulley or pull attachment and your lat pull attachment. You can do those exercises. You got your, that's a double D actually. And then you got your V tricep attachment. Then you've got your, uh, your rope attachment there. But today, just for demo purposes, I'm gonna do the single rope because this is actually new. Just bought this thing so I could do single rope pools and I need, I need a D-ring. So let's get this D-ring and we'll attach it just like normal. Put it up here on the pulley. What we're gonna do is a tricep extension. Let's get that elbow up nice and high and then you pull. All right, see it's, Gonna move a little bit, but it's very stable, especially for what it is. Ugh, all right, that's enough for that. Whew, that 35 pounds ain't no joke on the tricep. This is one of my favorite uh, components of my home gym because it allows me to do a lot of stuff that I couldn't normally do at home, but now I have more gym type stuff in here because I got the lat pulls, you know, I got tricep push downs and stuff. I got to figure out a way to anchor the cord. Uh, that way I can get it to come up. That way I can do some more curl motions and stuff like that. Of course, you would need a longer cable for that, but it only comes with this one, which is about seven feet. You'll see the link in the description. All right, so 
Couple of other components to the home gym. Uh, let me see here. Oh, another one that I love. The landmine attachment. Once you're done with your bench press, you can actually take this same full uh, Olympic bar. And you can attach it in here. Come on in here, cameraman. Get some of this sweat dripping. Respect that sweat. All right, so this is the landmine. It actually screws on to the back of your bench press or anything rather. You can actually bolt this into the floor, the concrete or whatever, or just attach it through this little screw lever right here. And it swings left to right and up and down. So that's gonna make a great uh, landmine maneuver. You're definitely gonna wanna get yourself one of these, uh, these uh, roll bars right here. So we'll put that right there. Hopefully I can get you a link for that one as well. But I wanna show you how this landmine works so well in a home gym. You just shove it in there just like such. Make sure you screw it down because you don't want any excess movement while you're doing your exercise. Remember, righty tighty lefty loosey. Then you put on some weight. You should definitely put on your roll attachment before you put on the plate. Screw that in, get it nice and snug. Then your plate goes on. I am dripping sweat profusely. This is crazy. So hot out here. I love working out in my garage because of a couple of factors. You have the heat and humidity. I live in Houston, Texas, and the heat and humidity is ridiculous. So it adds to the flavor of the workout, man. It helps you burn more calories, helps your endurance. Oh man, it's, it's an animal. And just being outside in that, in that heat, and I love the dirty floor. I only blow out my garage, I don't know, every two months or so. I like the grit. I like working out outdoors because, you know, it just reminds me of when I was in my military days and the gyms we had in Korea were always kind of dirty. All the equipment was rusty and just, you know, it was just like caveman type of stuff. So this just kind of takes me back there and that's kind of why I named it the pit as well. But let me go ahead and demonstrate one of these and how well it works. So get yourself squatted down nice and deep and then you pull back and you tap your chest. I don't want to tap my chest so I won't damage my microphone, but that's how it's done. You can even reverse that bad boy. Get those biceps working along with those lats. So that's one of my new favorite attachments that you can just clip onto a base of a bench press or you can even screw it into the wall, whatever have you, great attachment to purchase. Now I got three more things to show you. Come on over here, watch your step camera, man. So you gotta have yourself a punching bag for a couple of reasons. When, uh, when you and your significant other ain't uh, on the same page, you can just come out here and beat the crap out of your punching bag, <laughs> get your cardio in, right? And release some tension. Cause you know, we all quarantined and I know a lot of people who are quarantined right now be, you kind of need a punching bag. And the next thing I want to talk about is an old tire, man. Get yourself a tire. So this tire came off my old pickup truck. It is actually a 35 inch, yeah, it's a 35 inch tire. It weighs about 70 pounds. And uh, I don't know, you could get a bigger tire if you want to, uh, but it's gonna be hard to store and super heavy. So I like this one because not only is it flippable, you're not gonna have a whole bunch of weight, you know, as you push up, but the act of the movement and the flipping, it's good for cardio, good for functional training and stuff like that. Now, if you actually wanna get some some real heart pumping exercises going. You squat down, drag this thing close to your legs, hoist up and throw it off of you and then go chase after it and repeat that exercise about for about 18 reps. That'll get that heart pumping. Now, if you're gonna have a tire, you gotta have a sledgehammer and that is strictly for beating the crap out of this hammer. This is a 12 pound hammer, I believe. I don't remember, but I think it's 12 pounds. Let me see. Yep, 12 pound sledgehammer. You just beat the crap out of that tire. Last but not least, you gotta have yourself something to jump on because you need to have your plyometric exercises. Plyometrics, yeah, you can do them without a box, but what good is a proper workout if you're not jumping up on a plyo box over and over again? So, <laughs> so yeah, that's it, man. There's a lot of other small components that we probably don't need to talk about. You definitely need a place to stretch, maybe do some yoga or something like that. So you do need a few mats and you're gonna need uh, some, some of those roller, uh, foam rollers to get your gym straightened out. But for the most part, if you can collect a few of these items. Now, I don't expect everybody to go out and just buy everything I got here because this took quite a bit of time and quite a bit of money. However, I would also suggest 
Don't buy fitness equipment brand new unless you have to. Fitness equipment is just like, I don't know, a car. As soon as you purchase it, it devalues like 40%. Find it on Craigslist, offer up, five miles, whatever. But if, especially if you're gonna buy dumbbells and weight plates. Now, when it comes to attachments like, you know, this, uh, this landmine attachment or a pulley or something like that, most likely you're gonna have to buy it brand new because people don't sell that kind of stuff, you know, out of their garage. I know I wouldn't once I got my hand on it. But that's pretty much it, man. Hope y'all had a good time watching this video. I am profusely sweating. And <laughs> as you can see, I am out of breath. Hey, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And if you did, throw me some emoji hands up in the comment section. I gotta go make some more videos, but first I gotta work out and clean up my mess. But until I see y'all again, keep being good together and I'll see you when I see you. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you might wanna consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because members has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you, and I'll see you at the next one. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?